um, what are you watching right now? Like on TV? Yeah, like what is what is something that you're watching right now on television? I just I'm finished asking, Ozarks. I'm asking, this, I'm asking this for a reason. Okay, how do you like yeah. Ozarks? Is I mean I I hate that they leave you like I don't like shows like that cliffhangers I'm not a fan of that because I want to I want the resolution right um but Ozarks is such a well written show man because it's like oh one, it's life in general you know people try to hold stuff together Marty's always pulling pieces back together <laughs> I'm like that's life man in general I feel bad for him no nah, I get you though I get you did you watch it yeah um I haven't watched because I'm a I'm a fan of binge watching shows yeah and right now i'm binge watching um power book two okay i haven't seen that yet okay um have you seen the the original power i watched all of the original power okay. yeah, yeah i'm watching yeah. power book two the reason why i didn't want to get into power book initially was due to the fact i wasn't a Tariq fan i'm me either bro He's no, wait a minute bro listen let me tell you <laughs> power book my g dope it's decent our power book is decent. And then Tommy just, like, Tommy just came out too. I seen that too. It's, you know, Stars is promoting it, but it's, I, it's two episodes. I watched hey. the first one, but I, I'm not going to watch anymore until they all accumulate. But Got the you. reason why I was asking you what you're watching though is because have you seen Will promoting Bel Air? Bro, I'm not a fan of that. I seen it. I'm not a fan of that. Wait a minute. Let me can, let me pitch it to you real quick. Just let me pitch it to you because we are. There's a lot of people that Make feel sure the same you like way. This that video you feel, and right? yeah. subscribe. And the reason is. is because you can't. You shouldn't mess with a classic. I get it. I understand it. Right. I get it. I understand it. I I, I more so. I don't mean to cut you up. I more so mean like. It's different now. They changed it. But. In a good way, really good way. And the reason is, is because think about this. Back when The Fresh Prince originally aired, it was on NBC. Right. There's certain shit that you can't say or do on NBC. That's true. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. I got you. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just bring you in a little bit. Keep going. Right? Yeah, keep going. Let me hear you. I'm people. Now because it's on Peacock, they can stretch it and they can go further. So now it's not only about the comedic aspect of Bel Air, but they're bringing yeah. into the reason why Will left West Philly. We know right. that he got into a fist fight. Right. They go into detail as to the actual reason why he left West Philly. Right. Now, now they're touching on social issues. See, they could they couldn't touch on social issues the way that they could now back in the day because the climate is entirely different now. Yeah. It's, it's more open. it's open and we're on yeah. peacock which they push the border cussing yeah. everything so it's an entirely no nah, that's serious so it's an entirely different feel it's more of a dramedy right. than it is a comedy or anything else that's, well, well, and that's what i was gonna say i said the i mean the main reason i think i'm kind of turned off to it because it was a comedy and now you turn it into kind of a soap nah, it's I, ill bro it's ill i'm a check i'm a peep it I ain't at least, at least watch it, the first episode yeah yeah at i'll give it a chance episode. Bro, it's dope, bro. Will Will supporting it, so bro, I'm like, well, well, of course, because he's the executive producer and he's the. I mean, the, 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 but the, I'm just saying, he's the machine behind it. So, but it's yeah. uh, it's dope though, yeah. bro. It's dope. It's super dope. Is it's it out dope. already? Yeah, it came out. Um, See, I didn't know last that week. Either. It, it came out last week Sunday. There's three episodes up already. Okay. And then they're in a new episode every Thursday. Yeah. See, I'm so I'm behind. The, See, I watched the first episode, but I'm not gonna watch it again until it's. Okay. Until it uh, is done, but it's dope. Like the you, season, I would, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell you to watch anything that. Well, is, you know, we may have different tastes, but still, it's yeah. dope. It's dope. Nah, it's dope. I, get, I, I mean, I'm gonna give it a chance. I mean, fresh. I grew up on Fresh Prince, so it's, I feel like I gotta at least give it a chance. Watch a couple episodes, and if it, you know, if it is what it is, I probably. I don't have a lot of time to watch TV. So nah, if I got it ain't you. good. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't you. good for me. You. It ain't good for the geese. Yes, sir, bro. Let's go ahead. Let me intro this real quick, brother. Let's do it. Let me intro this. New viewers, welcome. Returning viewers, welcome back to Baseline the Goal Line. I am your humble, gracious host, Alan Colbeezy Colburn, and in the building, I have a special guest with me. Wisconsin player of the year in high school in the state. That is an accomplishment within itself. 
Division three national champion at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater, which is an accomplishment within itself. And now we just gonna say this fitness guru <laughs> in the building. Something My man bad. Steve Morris, bro. Thank you for coming, man. Welcome. I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah. It's so it's so crazy how you know we we initially met, man, and um chance, bro. Just just night, man. at the gym, just working out at the yeah. gym, and come to find out, we you know our our likenesses and our our friendships and relationships overlapped. And even the even the decade long ones, right? I'm saying, which is crazy, right? So, um, but you here, man, and I appreciate you coming on because Always. it's so funny, you know, you talking to people and you starting to get these relationships with people, but you don't know their backstory. And then when I started right. talking about the onions of you, you know, the layers <laughs> of, and, and trying to figure out your backstory, not knowing that you were a player of the year in the state of Wisconsin, not knowing that you were um, a national champion for the University of Whitewater, man. It's, it's just dope, bro. And I just wanted you to come on because for my platform, what I like to do is I like to get people to come on um, and give them their flowers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To, for, for them to tell their story because, you know, growing up, we didn't have this. Right. We didn't have, you right. know, we didn't have for this the, these different outlets that we have right now and the people didn't have a chance to come on and tell their story. So like now I'm even getting to the point where I'm going to start bringing high school people on. To, get, dope. to tell their story and stuff like that, but dope. hey, really quick, man, let's let's do this because this is what we always do before the show. Um, I want to do a toast. Um, and for y'all out there watching, um, let me know what it is that you're sipping on. You know how we do a comment down below. I have some tequila, hey. eighteen hundred uh, respasado right here. What you got, Steve? I got a little bourbon bullet. Whiskey. Bourbon bullet. What, what, what kind of bur what kind of bourbon? Come on, bullet, bullet, baby. Come on, okay, bullet. bullet. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. So no, no, we got to do the toast, bro. Relax. Relax, I just want to sip it. I can smell I mean, it. Bro, it's been a long day. Relax. <laughs> so what you know we, what we always toast to, to life, to health, to wealth, and yeah. last but not least, sports talk. Salute. That's it. Salute. Hey, you laughing. You laughing. Uh, it, it has been a long day, man. No, nah, it's, it's been a long day for me, too, man. We <laughs> long are, week. It's nuts, bro. It's nuts yeah. what's going on um, at work right now. But, you know, nonetheless, we're here to unwind. And we're here to talk about sports. So, yo, listen. So, once again, the platform is to give athletes, both current, former athletes, high school athletes, collegiate athletes, pro athletes, a chance to come on and tell their story. So, um, my first question for you is, um, given we know, since I just intro it, we know what you, you know, your high school football career, even what you yeah. did collegiately. But was there any other sports that you played growing up? Man, you know what? Honestly, no. Um, kind of like grew up. I mean, football was really it. My brothers played it. Um, the neighborhood kids played it. It was really just kind of what I was drawn to. I was just going to so say, I, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I dabbled. I dabbled. Um, you know, I tried out middle school, high school for basketball. Just like didn't feel right. I wrestled. Um, I didn't compete. I did wrestle, though. And like I went to practices. And I think that helped with like uh, just like coordination, balance, th things like that, strength. Got it. Um, you know, it, funny enough, you know, you said fitness guru and like the weight room and stuff. I wasn't big into it till like maybe junior year of college. So like football oh, really? was really like, fo yeah, seriously, football was really like I play quarterback. Like, I don't right. got to be big. I just got to be able to get Wait, the ball we'll off. Get to that. Just, just, we, we'll... Yeah, 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 yeah. Got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so fo football was more like I, you know, and then. With the coaches that I had, they, you know, they like, I want you to work on your craft, you know, which is, we'll get to that too, you know. Yeah, definitely, so, for sure. So yeah. what, so what initially drew you to football? Like, was it, was it something that, that you saw that you, that, that, what was the triggering point that said, okay, this is, this is what I want to do? I mean, I, I would say probably because of the, like the way I excelled at it, you know, I was young and I was playing. My brother's ten years older than me, mm -hmm. so I'm playing with him and his friends. But I'm shout out to Derek too, by the way, man. That's yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my boy. Coming. Yeah. Um, but I was, you know, him and his friends. I'm competing with them, mm -hmm. and they're all ten years older than me. So I'm like, I gotta be kind of decent, right? You know, and, and then you start kind of getting that positive feedback and that positive praise, and it, it I mean, it motivates you to want to be better, want to, you know, do better. So uh, I just kind of 
stuck with it, you know, sure. started working at it, figured out I could throw. Okay, that so kind of history. I got you, bro. So and that's dope, man. So youth wise, did you play the RYS? Did you do all of that uh growing yeah. up? Yeah, I wanna say I started RYS sixth grade, maybe. Uh, okay. And I afraid to get hit, you know, the right. first year I put pads on, I was real timid. Uh but I mean, once I took that first hit, I'm like, oh, that didn't hurt. Right. And then after that, confidence it was like, grew, yeah. Confidence grew in everything. Yeah. I got you. you. Know. I got you. Um, what, at what point did you feel that, okay, I have something? I know I know that you, you know, you, you normally, I mean, that you previously mentioned it was when you were playing with your brothers and stuff and you, they were 10 years older than you and bigger and stuff yeah. like that. But at what point did you say, okay, this could be something that could carry me into, um, like, when did you realize that you were good? Like, real? Yeah, uh, I mean, I've always been a real humble dude. Um, and and see, I think to stop right there because I love that you say that. No, seriously. And I, the reason yeah. why I say I love that you say that is because this show is meant for bragging. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's meant to, and I don't mean bragging like as being yeah. an asshole. But no, yeah. it's, it's meant for people to, for me to give people their flowers and for right people on. to talk about their career and stuff like that. People who wouldn't normally even talk about their career. This is, this is what it's meant That's me. Exactly. Yeah. So this is what it's meant I for. I love that. Yeah, so brag, bro. This um, brag. Let's brag. <laughs> um, I would, man, I would probably say we had, a, my freshman year, we had a camp um, coming into high school. I went to Horlick. Um, we had a camp and I was on the 50 yard line and we were, I played DB at the time I was coming in, I was going to be a DB and I was messing around during a break and me and my boy were just throwing a ball and the quarterbacks at the time were throwing like fade balls into a garbage can. Mm -hmm. um, and they weren't on a break. And I, you know, when they eventually did go on a break, I'm like, let me see if I can drop a ball. in. The when you say, oh, you mean that the quarterbacks weren't on a break at that time? They were actually. Yeah, they, they were, were. I was we were watching them like drop gotcha, gotcha. balls into the bucket. Gotcha. And then after like they went to take their break and we're standing on like the probably the 40 yard line um, and we're throwing a ball. And I'm like, let me see if I can drop a ball into this bucket. They're and, 40 or the opposite 40. So they're 40. So like Got where it. they were to the end zone. Yeah. yeah. So and I'm standing on a 40 and I just threw like a a nice little rainbow and it dropped in the bucket and it was the first throw I did. And I'm like looking around and my coach is like, Hey, you know, George Machado. Um, he goes, I want you to go with the quarterback. Yeah. 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 He's like, I want you to go with the quarterbacks for the second session. So I'm like, okay. You know, and then after and this that, is after just one throw, let me just clarify. One, is one throw, lit, okay. one throw. One okay. throw. And, uh, I, I'm kind of just like, it was literally, you know, it was confident. It was a confidence builder. Cause literally right before that, I had just got snagged on. I got mossed, as they say, yeah. um, by by one of the receivers who was playing varsity at the time. Okay, um, you remember who it was? So, Brian Mosley. Okay, okay. But I, you don't forget stuff like that. No, no, no. I got was, you. That's the reason. It was a grab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you, got you, got you. <laughs> it was a grab. And shout out to my boy. That's my brother, man. You know, and it, it ended up working out. You know, I, I went and moved to quarterback, and we was homies already. Mm -hmm. So it was like after that. So I just figured like I got something. I just gotta so really own it quick. in now. Okay, so really quick. So this is you said at this point in time you were a freshman, or were you in eighth grade? Freshman. Freshman. I was a freshman. freshman. Yeah, okay. freshman. So at that point in time, had during this point when you threw the the the, the, the drop in the bucket, did you already know where the team solidified that you were gonna be playing varsity at that time? Yes, I was gonna be playing corner. Oh, you're going to be playing corner at that time. Okay. Yep. So let's just transition really quick. Let's just go back just for a split second. And I'm going to ask right. you, I'm going to get back to this, this really quick. So okay. going into your freshman year at Horley, um, was there, was there a tryout period where you were practicing with the, maybe the JV team? And everything like, and then Coach Machado saw you and moved you up to varsity, or was it right out the gate you were in? You were playing with varsity. No, no, I was I was playing freshman. I played freshman ball. Okay. And like now, I was playing receiver and safety my freshman year, and like I think <coughs> based on that freshman season, you know, went and Machado. I think we got something in this guy. I think he's gonna be. He's gonna play ball hawk for us. He's gonna come up and play varsity. Um, because I mean. I safety is my literally my home. I think that's more of my like 
my heart because okay. I just like to run through people. And that's kind of what I was doing as a freshman. Like, you almost can see the players that are playing above, like, the level that they're at. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Nope, I, and I, I, I always felt like I was a step ahead of the people my age. Got you. Um, you want to know what's funny, though, real quick blurb. Um, if we go back almost to – I was – I think I was eight at the time. My brother was a senior in high school. He's picking up his equipment, Derek. Okay. Um, and I told Machado, I said, hey, when I come to Horlick, I want you to be here. I'm going to be your quarterback at eight years old. Wow. Didn't know – didn't know a thing, though. Didn't know a thing. That was – that's a true story. Wow. And well, I didn't know that – Were you playing quarterback at, at eighth grade in RYS? No. Where no, were you playing? No. What position were you playing? Um. I, I was playing running back. I played some safety and receiver when I was in RS. Yeah, never say quarterback. Ne- no clue. No clue. Wow. I think Tony Tony Stouts was a man at the time, and everybody's yeah. talking about Tony and he's a quarterback yeah. and yeah. and this and that. But I was like, hey, don't leave. I'm gonna come play quarterback for you when I'm in high school. But you don't and know I, what 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 prompted you to say nothing, quarterback? That's crazy. Nothing. That's crazy. My family didn't. My family didn't know. Wow. Because Derek Derek was like, you're gonna play running back, like. You know, you're evasive, you're quick. Like, right. so everybody thought I was going to be a running back going into high school. And, like, you know, you kind of play your style that people are like putting you in that box. It's kind of yeah, what you yeah. lean towards. Right. And then that, then I threw that ball at that camp. Okay. So, so, so that was, so let me, let me just pinpoint again the time frame with this. Okay. This was when you threw that ball, was this, during after my freshman year after freshman year that's what i'm getting yes. okay so yeah. it was after freshman so, year so the yeah, whole so freshman I, year you played you played on the freshman teams i played safety correct yeah on the freshman team and then yep. that summer is when this happened and you mm-hmm. were on the varsity team starting your sophomore year my, my sophomore year po- supposed to be playing db but ended yeah. up getting switched to quarterback so so I'm taking reps and I was super raw, bro. Rough around the edges. Like I had never thrown a ball like with purpose. I was just like out there, unless it was like playground ball, you know, you go out there and you playing 500 right, or whatever. Right, right, right. But yeah, like yeah. I played, I played corner against Tremper my sophomore year. Um, and I ended up at halftime. They said, you're going to go in that quarterback. Oh, so told you, me so at halftime. I'm so, I'm, okay. I'm glad that we get in here. Because this, yeah. let's unpack this. Because you didn't initially start your sophomore year off as a quarterback. No, no okay. corner. But so, but that summer prior to, when you when it's your the freshman year, your summer, that's when Machado saw that you he possibly had something in you as a quarterback. Correct. Okay, but you started Correct. your sophomore year out playing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. How many had games a, did you play a, corner? Just one. Just, just one. one game. The first yeah. game of the season playing against Trevor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Had a pick. Had a pick in the first half. I thought I was about to go crazy that game. Yeah. And then it was like. And then the second half is when he said, "Okay." Yeah. Yeah. How did you? How did you fare that first game? Or that first half. My my first season. Let's not. Let's get past that. I thought you said this was about bragging. Cause we ain't much. No, that's not it. We don't get there. We don't get there. But you gotta. You gotta talk about this shit before we can brag. Yeah. 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 The launch that I took. Um. I honestly, bro. You know what? Coming in, like, I knew the playbook, um, but there's so many jitters, bro, as, as like, a sophomore, first year young. And then I, now I'm playing almost – I felt like I was playing out of position. Got and it. I don't, th- I don't think I really got my confidence until the very last game against Case. The very and last we, game sophomore season. Yeah. Yes. And that was – that we went one and nine that year. Okay. Um, what was your – What do you remember your, your touchdown to interception ratio? I, I think I had seven touchdowns. I think I had, like – 21 interceptions because you were just raw. You were just, yeah. Raw. I mean, yeah. You weren't able, I had like, you weren't able yeah, to read no. coverages and anything. No. Like that, right. Okay. I had no experience. Like I, I probably had like 15 rushing touchdowns. Okay. Maybe so look, less. Okay. So let me ask you this, then, Steve. was it easy for you to look at the playbook and understand the playbook from a quarterback's perspective, or were you still looking at the playbook and when you're dissecting plays, were you still thinking about it from the corner, from the from the DB's perspective? You know, that's a good Init- question. Initially, when you me. when you first when um, you picked it up, and I'm I would I picked it up. Yep. I would say I would say it was more of like an athlete thought, like hmm. like I want to make the big play. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know I'm looking at the X's and I'm always like who's got the vertical? Yeah. Okay, and then it's not really reading. The difference, I think, is like I'm instead of looking at the coverage and thinking about the coverage, you know, versus the play, I was more so thinking about the routes 
Got instead it. Instead of like where I should go with the ball, I'm thinking like I'm predetermining my throws. Yeah, if that so makes it, sense. It didn't matter. It didn't matter if they were in man, if they were in zone, if they had two high safeties, anything like nope. that. You were just trying was, to get the numbers. I, I, I was looking. Yeah, I was given. I don't think I had a read progression really. I wasn't good at that yet. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I would just kind of predetermine. I'm gonna either go to this hitch. If the hitch ain't there, I'm about to take off. Okay. So right. then that was kind of it. O line wasn't great. And I won't, you know, that's not a knock at them. They were young, no, I smaller, get it. I you know, kind of undersized. No, but it's a factor, though. It's a factor, for sure. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a factor. So, okay, especially, so, no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, especially playing cats like John Clay, mm -hmm. you know, Hermes, uh, Anton Graham. Um, Park had some boys, and, and yeah. they were just seniors. And John Clay was playing both sides of the ball, wasn't he? But he played DM, bro. He, yeah. My, my sophomore year, I think there was a play at Hammes. I don't know if you've ever been to Hammes, but there was a play. I, we were like, it was an option. And okay. I swear I beat him. I beat him. His feet stopped. It was a read option. Feet stopped. And I'm like, I, I had the edge. So I'm like, boom, I'm about to take off. Boy, I don't know how he caught me. But he ended up pushing it's me called, in my called, back. It's called Division One speed, bro. Listen, listen. <laughs> and he, he pushed me in my back, bro. And I swear I slid. Like, my hand could touch the track. Like the oh wow, like, yes, I promise you. And I was maybe a buck forty at the time, but he literally must have bench pressed me and like I literally slid in the grass. And my hand, I remember touching the track to get up. I'm like, oh, oh that wow. happened. That's crazy. So, yeah, oh, man. So, so this this is good because you know this is a dynamic that of course I didn't know. So this is good, yeah. and I'm talking about this is good about where you started and then where you ultimately ended your high school your high school career so yeah. that summer did you make it a point going into your junior year to dedicate yourself to this quarterback position i did um i ended up we our system changed so like we were our we were a spread offense but it was it wasn't like it's the best way to describe it. i didn't have the the tools in place for it to work the way that we were trying to program it you know Okay. We were fortunate enough that we had some kids what you, what transfer. You, what do you mean by the tools in place? So like the, the people to fit certain positions. Like we the had a lot of we had a lot of people playing out of position. Got you it. know, you got slot slot receivers that can't run routes. And got that's it. like their main main job. Um and we ended up we had some guys transfer in. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I have one kid, Andrew Morell, I'll shout him out. He was he was a major piece to what we were trying to do. Um mm -hmm. You know, on top of Brian Mosley, he's kind of our stretch the field guy. Mm -hmm. um, and then my buddy, Jerry Lepaka, who recently passed, you know, RP to him. But these these guys come in and now we can start to see offense kind of, you know, we're young now, but we start to see our pieces get in field and we're like, OK, now we just got to start working. Mm -hmm. um, spent the summer in seven on seven camps. I think we won, you know, Every single, I think there might have been one that we didn't win, but we literally like went everywhere, like Northwestern, uh, Northern Michigan, um, Western Michigan. And this um, is this is Horlick putting this together as a team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's George, dope. George George Machado rented a, a big old runner van, sprinter van, and and got us to all these places. Um, and we were balling. I'm mm -hmm. talking like confidence growing. You know, I'm starting to read defenses. Starting like. I really like stepped up and I'm like, I, like, I want to be good. I want us to be good. It was more so like, I want us to be good. What was, what was the trigger? What was the, 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 when the lights, the light um, bulb came on to say for you to say, okay, I know this is a cover two. I know this is a, 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 a man to man. Like, I know this is man to man. I know this is, you know, whatever. Like when did, when did that come together for you? Like when did the light bulb come on and say, okay, I'm learning how to read these different coverages. I know that I can get to my second and third progressions now because they're taking away the first, the yeah. first read. I think I think it was more so uh, like the wrinkles. Like we we did a lot of motions and you can see guys, they either run with or they bounce. Right. They say, you know, pick up, whatever. But exactly. you just read. I, I think I think a lot of it is, you know, the safeties. The safeties that give it away too based on if they're too high, you know, one high, if right. one's in the box, whatever it might be. Um, a lot of times it was, and, and in high school is a lot easier than college, but, of course, of course. um, I think, I think it really came down to like Machado trusting us and putting in certain wrinkles that helped me know those coverages. Okay. So, yeah. So, so then going into your junior year, right? Mm -hmm. Going into your junior year, you're still kind of 
the unknown. Yeah, for right? sure. So people really for don't sure. know who you are going into your junior year. How well for did sure. you play your junior year? Um, I, first, so we played Oak Creek. We played Oak Creek the very first game, and is this Oak Creek? And, is this the Oak Creek coming off of a um, state championship? No, no, no. They, they were, were they were, enough. they they were still good, but they weren't like Oak they weren't Creek when, you, when when you guys were, yeah, yeah. like okay. Brian Calhoun and all them guys. No, no, no not that good. Oh, yeah, uh, that. back back in back them and stuff. Um, them them guys were different. They were savages, but right. um. They were good, man. They were, there's a cat named Angela Ruiz, bro. He played safety, had the Troy Palomalu hair. Mm-hmm. When I tell you, me and him went at it for four quarters, like meeting. Like I was not gonna let him run me over. I was not going. He was not gonna get run over. Mm-hmm. It was like that commercial with LT, like Ladanian Tomlinson and him and oh, Palomalu. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was like that the whole for um, for four quarters, bro. Like okay. 40, 48 minutes is just like me and him going back and forth. We end up winning that game six to zero. Okay. Um, Low scoring game. But like but like that game, and we scored in the fourth quarter. So it's one of them games where it's like we scratched and clawed for that win, and it just like did something to us, bro. Right. Okay. Um next week we come out and we have Franklin, and we ended up Franklin, which is you know, they're great, they're mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. They were D2 at the time. We ended up beating them 21-6, right? So now we're two and all kind of feeling like the summer is translated into what we're doing. Yeah. Third game we played Tramper, I end up tearing my MCL. And I'm like, dang, like you, you tore I can feel the balloon and yeah, tore my MCL my, my oh, junior okay. year. Okay. Um, third game, and I can you feel the air, you know, on the sideline because your team is like that's our quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like he's our guy. And like at the time I was playing high. I think I I probably had like four touchdowns. I had all of our touchdowns at the time, no turnovers. Like you could feel the like the confidence that I was gaining. And like I did that and you know, Machado, I remember tearing my MCL and, like, uh, Kevin Sharp, that was a DN at the time, he tackled me from back, and I just kind of felt awkward. And, you know, Machado's like, get up. I need you to get up. And I remember him, like, literally talking to me, like, get up. And I'm like, like, I can't straighten my leg right now. Mm-hmm. And I remember tearing my MCL, and I'm, I'm thinking in my head, like, like our season, like our undefeated season is about to be a wrap. Like, because yeah. you, you could feel it. And, you know, the paper started shifting their narrative on us. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Yeah. And well, up, so, so, so speaking of, I mean, real quick, and I'm, I'll get back to you because you just mentioned that the paper um, switching the narrative. Were they? Were you guys how highly touted coming into that season? Not at all. Oh wow. Okay. So there, you- there was there was so many question marks. That's the thing. Like we went one and nine the year before, and you know, like they do those just preseason previews, and they're talking right, exactly. about the players. That's that they what got. I was thinking towards. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know the papers like uh, well, we don't know who Steve Morris is. Like we don't know who Brian Mose. Like Brian Mose is a returning you know starter or whatever. Like, but does he have the guy to get him the ball? Like kind of gotcha. thing. So it was like it was like the preseason was still like there was naysayers, and then we started winning, and you can see you can see like it was changing, mm. right? You can see they're getting more confidence. Like maybe they are the real deal. Yeah, and then that happened, and like you know I was out I think three weeks. Hey, um, right? You said. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We won we won the very first week, dropped two games. Um, and then I think we had like Bradford, um, had a couple of tough games at the end, Burlington, and we dropped some balls, some ball games at the end, went five and five, played Verona, and Verona smoked us, bro. <laughs> smoked us. This like is, this is the first round of the playoffs? Yes. Okay. We, and we had to we had to drive up to Madison. I, when I tell oh. you they had these these two DNs, bro, that mm-hmm. were like six six on both sides. Bro, I couldn't even get a ball off. I'm talking about balls getting back down. They they returned the opening kickoff. That pretty much sums it up. So yeah, you knew it was gonna be a long ass day. The first play of the bro, game. Listen, trouble listen. With. <laughs> yeah, and then and then they kicked off. <laughs> they oh kicked wow, off. that's crazy. That's crazy. We muffed, we, we muffed the kickoff, and then we get the ball on like the four, and I get smoked like very first play like safety. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, oh, wow. that's okay. that's a hard bus ride home. Yeah, hard bus ride and home. I think I think. Oh, I think that I think that bus ride was like my like trigger to like it's not happening next year. Like we're gonna win some ball games next year. Got you, got you. You know. So, so because this is still you know this is we leading up to the dope part to all of this dope yeah. that's about to come into form. It's but it's bubbling <laughs> right now. Like everything is bubbling underneath it's the. Let me know. It's simmering. It's simmering right yes. now. So, like, yeah, right on. 
So going into like that summer, first of all, how was your rehab going? It was into tough. That? Okay. It was tough. I uh got probably we'll get into my injury, but like no, that was sure. probably top. That was probably top three. Like as far as like severity and like yeah 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 trying trying to fight through certain like you know I I'm a mobile quarterback. So right. Take my legs away, and not half of my game is gone. Yeah, for sure. So, so, let's so that go. was sorry. No, go ahead. No, that's it. I mean, I, okay, it was tough. No, nah, I get it. So, because you, I, I know earlier, you mentioned that you really didn't start getting into weightlifting or anything until probably in college. Yes. Even after the injury, you you still didn't lift or anything. Is is? I I might have you know my brother Derek again. My right. motivator, he right. like, man, you gotta, you gotta get in the gym, like, you gotta, like, gotta put some size on, you, you know, that's gonna keep happening if you don't. And I'm like, what was your plan? I, with? I got you. Uh, my, I graduated my senior year at like 140 pounds. Your senior year, you were 140. <laughs> yeah, I was like five, five ten, six. I was like five ten, maybe. You know, I'm in there somewhere. But I was 140. Six foot 170. Bro, that's what high school stuff does. Yeah, bro. Yeah, they, they stack it. They I, was, stack it. I, was, I was I was a hundred, maybe in pads and wet. Mm-hmm. But but I like I was like 140, 145, bro, my senior year. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so yeah. The summer of your senior of going and leading to your senior year, that summer. You mentioned that you didn't want to go back yeah. to, to have that feeling that you had your junior year. What changes did you make for yourself in the off season? To pre- to better prepare you for your yeah I was I was up uh, Machado man uh, shout out to him again but he like I was up at five a.m. you know I would go to school he would pick me up at five a.m. and we he bought me like a net with colored dots on it and I would do different movements sprint outs I would do boots I would do like my my motions in the game and he would say like I would do a sprint out he would say a color like last second I'd have to hit that color and like I. I got so proficient at that, bro. Like, I could do stuff with my eyes closed. Like, if I looked at the net, closed my eyes, I could do it with my eyes closed and hit dots. Mm-hmm. And then he, he, you know, he hung that outside, put it on the goalpost, and I was like, I was on that. This like, was all at Horley Field, right? This was yeah. all doing in, all the time, the, right? Yeah. Or not yeah. Horley Field, but Horley High School. Hor- yeah, it was in the field house. Yep. Yep. Okay. And at the time, that was like, that was the field house was so trash at the time, bro. Like, okay, it was bad. <laughs> but I, w- I was literally inside, bro. Like. 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Like I was doing all of my football stuff. It really wasn't any weights, but 5 a.m. Then I would go to school. I was literally like, instead of gym, he was my gym teacher. I would go in the room and watch film. He would put on film for me and I'd watch film from either the past year or I'd watch it like fr- from different games, like whatever he had on, I was watching. And okay. he would write a list of questions and I would answer those questions before I left that office. Like what cover was this? What play was 56? Sure. Like, yeah. So, and, you know, and, and, and once again, this is just a testament, man, to, to, you know, first of all, I, I believe quarterback is the most, um, is the probably the most difficult position to learn in any position when it comes to all of the major sports. Like if yeah. you go down, you know, basketball, football, baseball, whatever, if you itemize all these particular positions, I believe quarterback is probably the most important, or I shouldn't say most important, but the the, the hardest to learn. Because yeah, I'd agree. You have to learn coverages. You have to learn players' tendencies. You have to learn your players' tendencies. You gotta yeah. you gotta understand what the offensive line is doing. Where is this guard going? Where is the center going? You got the center has to under, it's so it's so many moving parts, man. It's so my, many moving parts. Uh, my quarterback coach used to say you got to be able to predict the future. At a court, as a quarterback, right. you got to be able to predict up. the yeah, future. Sure. That sums it up. Yeah. So yeah. and and it's just it's it's crazy because now I'm like the the accomplishments that you achieved leading going in, I mean after your senior year is just so much more impressive now due to the fact that I didn't know. Of course, you know, we talk, we talk yeah. on a consistent basis, but right. I didn't want to ask any questions because I knew we were going to be here today. Right. right? Um, and first of all, I don't like getting people prepared for what I'm going to be asking. I do my homework and stuff like that, but I don't like people getting yeah. prepared for what I'm going to be asking. But it's just so much more impressive due to the fact that 
freshman year, you were playing defensive back. Sophomore first game, you were playing defensive back, and then you didn't play, you know, you played quarterback the rest of the way, but you really only been playing this position for two years. For two That's years. It. So leading up to your senior year, that summer, you're doing all these different drills or whatever, but did you fathom what was about to happen? Could you, could you, I, I, I don't even want to necessarily say fathom. Could you see what was about to happen? I mean, no. I, I think the numbers that I put up, no. Speaking of which, go ahead. Keep talking. I I think uh, I genuinely came in with a mindset of like, I just want to win. Right. Like I'm I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to win. Like, regardless, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm a if if it's rushing, if it's passing, whatever I gotta do, like. I'm gonna make sure everybody's in the position for us to win, and that was my mindset. Like, if they see I'm working, they know that I'm gonna hold them to the same standard. So. Okay. So, so because you know, so now we're gonna get into this because your senior year, and I'm I don't want to you know I already, I already spoke about it in the beginning, but we'll get to that a little bit later. The accolades that you attained, yeah, uh, just the stats itself, right? So, eleven games played. You were 243 of 385. That's 63%. 260 or 2,679 yards passing, 26 touchdowns to seven interception to seven interception. You almost had a perfect QBR, which is yeah. Nuts. yeah. That's crazy. And then even rushing, 11 care or, or I'm sorry, 225 yard or 20 225 carries, 1252. You averaged 113 yards rushing and 243 yards passing. Yeah. Three touchdowns. That's that's crazy, bro. That's astonishing. Like I said, it goes back to the fact that, you know, it's just mind-boggling to think about those numbers due yeah. to the fact that you've only been doing this for two years. And people people that have been playing quarterback their whole high school career don't even reach these numbers. Yeah. I said, you know, I think we, I mentioned it to you. You kind of brought that up previously, but like Terrell Pryor and Matt Stafford, or not Matt Stafford, Matt Barkley were seniors that year as well. Mm -hmm. And those, their, num their numbers weren't close. Granted, they play in different states, obviously harder level. Yeah. Um, but that, just to kind of brag on myself again, I know you said Roses, that doesn't even include the two playoff games. You know, the playoff game, we scored 49 points. I think I had, like, 300 yards passing in that playoff game. Which game was that? It was against Bayview. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and then the park game, we also put up, you know, 28 points. So, I'm like, they also, you know, they're out seven touchdowns. Well, let's say 12, 12 touchdowns. Speaking of which. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> let's get to this, man. This is the park game that you're that you're talking about right here. Yeah. Nice swing pass right there. I like it. Take what they give you. Yeah, you got to take what they give you. That's it. Let your athletes work, right? Nice nice swing pass. And then look at this. Aha, come here. Nuh-uh. None of that. Come get some. Yeah. <laughs> Knock them over. Yeah. Come get some. Yeah, come get some. This was a hard fought loss right here. Yeah, it was, man. That one hurt. That stung. It's all good, man. It's yeah, all love. Man, let's, let's get to that, man. I like that. So, so just recap um, your senior year, though, Steve. So, senior year comes. I showed your stats. You know, I showed the end results. Yeah. But game by game, did you saw the progression? I'm assuming game by game. Yeah. Okay. So For you, sure. Um, were colleges coming? When did, Man, when, you, when did college just start coming? Uh, I would probably say, you know, that summer I had some some interest from a few schools, but it was really like mid -season. The summer of your junior stuff. year or the summer, like leading into your senior year? Yeah, yeah. So like okay. the summer into my senior year, I had, you know, I had a couple contacts, a couple interviews and like sent some some questionnaires back. You remember but I don't think it, Illinois State, uh, Northern Michigan, uh, I'm trying to think of that Missouri, Northwest Missouri. Um, it was a few schools, man. And I ended up St. Cloud. I ended up doing a few questionnaires, you know, a couple like uh, 
you know, the coaches come down here, they meet you and they talk to you and, you know, they're kind of boosting you up at that time. It's kind of telling you, like, you know, have a good year. And, you know, hopefully we're hoping to offer you, you know, we like what you have. Your your toolbox is, is what we're looking for. Um, and uh, it was pretty I started getting hit up probably the mid mid season point, like when they started to realize, like, oh, this kid is consistently putting up numbers like he's coming out every single week and like doing the same thing against everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started kind of getting contact. Like I had, uh, you know, contact from Wisconsin, um, probably Oregon. So like Oregon was more of a, like a connect, like a networking connection, but they ended up, you know, offering me, but it was the money to go to Oregon was ridiculous. Like yeah. my family couldn't afford that. Right. So are you at this point in time, are they recruiting you as a quarterback or are they recruiting you as an athlete? Yeah. Uh, Wisconsin recruited me as a corner. Uh, Oregon recruited me as a quarterback. Oregon was a lot similar offense wise to um, what we did. Wisconsin, however, at the time, like was that real right. pound of rock. Why do we, why, why, how would someone, and I'm, I kind of know the answers to some of these questions, but I'm asking for the, for the listeners. No, seriously, I'm asking. Yeah. For the, how does someone get recruited as a cornerback if their primary position isn't even on the defensive side of the ball, man, they they got plans for you. You know, they sometimes. I mean, you look at like Trayvon Diggs. You know, oh, right? Sure. You look at Trayvon Diggs. You want to play corner? Yeah, and you want to play wide receiver. Now I look at him. Yeah, for sure. Right. No, so you I mean, talk about Trayvon. Diggs, coaches know Dallas Cowboys, by the way. Yeah, co um, coaches know what they're doing, bro. And um, a lot of times. Me being me, you know, I get offered a walk, preferred walk-on position. But me being me, it's like you kind of got to put your pride down at that time. Like, I didn't. You know, I'm like, I play quarterback. Like, I'm a quarterback. I know I can play quarterback. Um, so, it was kind of like I didn't even – I didn't even – Think talk, about Like, Wisconsin. that wasn't even a thought for me. I, I, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to Wisconsin. I'm not playing corner. That was kind of my attitude. Uh, and I look back on that sometimes. I know. And I look back on that sometimes. And I'm like, you know what? That I would have been home, you know, because of the situation that came up later on in life, but I would have been home already. So um, I'm, I'm assuming you regret that then. It, I don't regret a thing that I do. In my Everything happens for a reason. And I know yeah, God, sure. my life is good, bro. Right. You know, so um, I do, I do look back on that. And I'm like, that would have been dope. You right. Know, some, okay. Playing I, at Cam Brando. I see what but, you're saying. So yeah. you mentioned Oregon, you mentioned St. Cloud, you mentioned Illinois State. You mentioned all these different schools. Um, and we'll get to, to, to the honors that you received your senior year in this year in a second. But what other schools outside of those schools took an interest in you? And I, I would probably say like every D2 school. Um, there's a few more D1s. Like I talked to um, Southern Illinois. Um, more, Northern Illinois. Actually, it was like was it more mid majors, more mid majors yeah, than high majors? Yeah, okay. Yep, okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So it was more so like Bowling Green, like those schools. Like it was Stop a lot area. of spread offense quarterback or spread offense like kind of schools, and um, more like uh, I feel like I got recruited a lot as an athlete. Like like you said before, like you know I was like three star athlete. Like yeah, they want to bring me in to play something else. But that's still that's still that's still kudos. Yeah. Due to the fact that you know leading into your senior year still nobody really knew Steve Morris. No. You know nope. what I'm saying? And then this happens. First of all, look at that picture. Who lowered look at that picture. <laughs> that's funny. 140 pounds, bro. Look. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Small dude. Yeah, man. But Three area football players earned unanimous first team honors in the Associated Press 2008 All State Football Team. Racine Horlick Sr. Steve Moyers was a unanimous, or unanimous first pick as a quarterback, which is dope. Yeah. And it goes down to say, you know, let's see, Morris, who was named to the state's to the state coaches Associated Offensive Player of the Year, completed. We went over these stats earlier. Um, yeah. 280 or 2,827 yards with 20, 28 touchdowns. Horlick went nine and two. He also rushed for 1,300 plus yards, which is crazy. And Coach Machado. Yeah, that's my know, boy. 
Did you know Coach Machado said that you were the best football or quarterback that he's ever coached? You know what? I didn't know that. Yeah, he said that. It's crazy. Coach Machado said a lot. that you were, yeah, he's coached a lot of quarterbacks. He said you were the best. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, definitely. I he's mean, look at Tony Stouts. Tony, Tony we mentioned him earlier. He yeah. was a monster. Yeah, Tony Stouts was really good. Definitely. So, yeah. um, so ultimately, where did you choose to go play college? Initially, we're going to throw that caveat in there. Yeah. Where yeah. Did you play? yeah, yeah. Um, I went to a school called Southwest Baptist. It's not, it's not a big school, man. Um, I end up, there was a local guy, um, actually played receiver at Wisconsin. His name is JC Dawkins. Came up, man, we connected, we vibed. And one of the coolest coaches I think I've ever, like, been privileged enough to, like, meet and work with and, like, super smart, bro, super knowledgeable. And the quarterback down there, his name is Steve Cachette. He was getting super, like, recognized, like, crazy numbers, bro. They, like, fed me these numbers, and I'm like, I can do that. Was this D2? Yeah, yep, yes, sir. Me too. Uh, yes, in Missouri. Yeah. My man. <laughs> I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate hey, that. Hey, always, always. So, so so in Missouri. Okay. What um so you said that you you were able to do what drew you out of everybody who was recruiting you? Yeah. Right? Out of every all these schools that are recruiting you, if, why this school? Man, um, so again, my receiver was getting recruited here. I said, if you bring him in, I'll come. Right. So they bring in my receiver. Right. They recruited him. They give him the a receiver scholarship. Was... Was Brian Mosley. Yep. Okay. So they bring him in. And now my I find out they're recruiting another one of my guys from Park. His name's Quincy Cannon. They recruited him now. So now I'm like, okay, my homies are coming down. Then I find out they're recruiting another one of my guys. And I'm like, Bro, this is like this is something I get to play with my boys in college right. on right. a scholarship right. with a coach that I like. Full and ride, then, full ride. And then there was a um, the court. Like I said, the quarterback ahead of me was like he was me, but I was like I think I'm better than him, or I can be better than him. Sure. Right. So I go down here and I'm like, you know, if he's getting recruited, he's getting NFL attention already. Like, you know, I'm I can make this happen. Like, so you said, Steve. Uh, what was the last name? Steve. Steven Gachette. Gachette, okay. He, he was a stud, bro. Was like, he? Yeah. Okay. And I go I go down there and, like, sure enough, he is everything they say he is. You know, mm -hmm. he's got a – he's a – You said you're going, you going down there as a, on a visit. Yeah, so, like, I go down there and, like, we, we're throwing a ball around and, like, that's my dog, bro. Like, I'm like, I can make this, I can make this happen. Like, so I ended up – I ended up committing, right? And I ended up going down there for a semester. Mm. So I'm down here. I play. I play like a season, and I, I play well. I'm second string behind all. Oh, real American. quick, real quick, Steve. Before we get to, before we get okay. to, I wanted to do a transition before we get to right that. To break up the monotony, real quick. But, um, and then I'll let you get back to the first season that you played. Right. So right I just on. got a couple questions for you, real quick. We're just gonna break up the monotony, right? It's 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 Let's called it. this or that. So you got to <laughs> pick one of the one of these things, okay? And if you okay. can't pick one of them, you have to take a sip. Oh God! All okay, right, got you. Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson? Lamar for sure. Okay. Um, when you were playing DB, right? Would you yeah. prefer a, an interception or a sack? Interception. Okay. Passing or rushing touchdown? Passing. Now let's transition to something else: chest day or leg day? Leg day. Okay. You can't spell you can't spell legendary without leg day, bro. Don't forget that. I like it. I like Listen. it. Listen. I like it. I like it. Meal prep or cheat day? Oh man, cheat day. Come on, man. I want a little piece of little wings. Come on, man. Come it's on, baby. You got the best pizza in the world here, man. They don't know it. Let them know. They don't know it. But let Bills them know Brothers it. rank fourth oh, in the country. Ferraro's. Ferraro's is great. Durango is great. <laughs> Angelos is great. Come on, Mario's. Mario's is great. And Facino's is great. Come on, bro. Listen. Let's toast to that, bro. Let's toast to that. Yeah, listen, toast. toast. That, sure. Come on, bro. All For right, so sure. that's dope, bro. Matt, real yeah. quick, what, what what's on your play? Give me a couple of artists that's on your playlist before we get back to um to your first year down at the Baptist. What, right now? No, yeah, while you're working out, give me some artists that's on your playlist. 
Oh man, you about to put me on the spot. Like, do I gotta be honest? Or yeah, you gotta, gotta be honest, what's... man. We shoot it from the parking lot. Well, I'm just saying, what's co- like what's culturally appropriate? Because if like do I gotta be I'm like, look, look. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, do I gotta be honest, man? Yeah, man, you, you, know, it, man. you know what, bro? You know what? I'm laughing because like I was just thinking about this, and it's you caught me in a bad time because I've been transitioning. I don't hear none of that shit, bro. Who is Come on the playlist, my guy? Listen. Bro, like right now. Bro, gotta, since leg day is your day. Since leg day, you at the gym, you're doing squats, you're doing lunges, you're doing Russian squats, you're doing leg man. press, whatever you're doing, who is on your playlist, dude? So, so, all right, I'm going to be honest. I had leg day today. I ain't even have headphones. I'm not trying to hear that shit. I'm just saying. I'm being real. I get you. But when you're working out, okay, what are the vibes? Man, I mean, what have I been listening to lately, bro? I'm not trying to see. This is. I'm trying to think. So like, I've been listening to like. The, Take a drink, then. Take a drink. I get caught, bro. Listen, I got you. <laughs> no, because you don't know what's going on. I get, no, listen, because I get caught up. I'm like, I listen to like the shit people put out, but I don't like it. Mm. Like that push a P. I'm, well, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think that sh- that shit's not. I don't. That don't vibe with me, bro. Yeah, push I, honestly, P. bro, I just like it's not. I'm. I don't know. I know I what you're saying? Though, train. What you're saying. I can't. I can't get on train, and I'm like, I'm waiting for good music, but I feel like I listen to older no, shit. Like, which is, which I was is, listening. I'm, listen. I'm not listen. When I ask you what's in your playlist, it could yeah. be something from the '60s. Well, right? Okay. Well, I'm just saying, I've been listening like, still tipping. I've been listening okay. like back then. I've been li- like, that's been my vibe. So, like, and even I'm just, Slim you, 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 I'm on Mike. See, here's the thing. See, you die. You dissecting Mike this. Jones. You could have just. Been, you could have did artists. You ain't necessarily <laughs> have to go into songs. Well, I'm just saying, Mike Jones, Slim Thug, uh, okay. I've been listening to some a little bit of Drake is dripped in there. I don't know. I don't really listen to. I mean, I'm not listening to. I'm thinking about. Oh, you don't have a workout playlist. No, I really don't. We gonna get to this you. later because the workout stuff yeah. is coming up later. So we definitely gonna get to this later. Let's get back yeah, to. Got, uh, you. Let's get back you. to your first you. year in, in college. <laughs> Man, what a year! Say that. Let's talk about it. Say that. Say that. I mean, what part? <laughs> You tipped? <laughs> no, we go. No, we uh, talk about because you said you went down there for a semester. Okay, yeah, right on, right on. Okay, so I go down, man. I go down there. Yeah, I bring this back. See, I'm an interview. Yeah. You see how I, I, bring I, this I back? love it. I love I got it. it. Let's I go. Love Let's it. go. I love Let's go. It. Let's go. Um, I, I literally go down there and like, I'm pushing one. I'm pushing the the starter. You know, you got the new cast. Like, man, you could be QB one. So like the recruiting class I came in with, you know, like, you, know you know this just as well as I do. The 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 most popular person in the locker room is the backup quarterback always. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't even say I was popular because I don't try. I don't never try for that, bro. I'm yeah, organic, I'm saying, and we talk any, about this too. Yeah. Aspect, because you know what people end up doing, and I'm not talking about the most popular inside. I'm talking about inside the locker yeah. room and even to the media because when the when the starting yeah. quarterback does some some bullshit. They're they're automatically yeah. asking for his job. So the the backup quarterback is right. always the most popular. Yeah, I I uh, go down here, man, and I'm second string, beating out like the other dudes, bro. And Steve, I think Steve can feel the pressure. He's got to play. He's got to play good because I'm behind him. You know, in the time I'm I'm pretty sure he was a junior and I'm I'm a freshman. So they end up redshirting me but I'm traveling in case he gets hurt or something right. happens. So I, they know like you're going in if he gets hurt. Right. Um, but, but, and back. but we still red shirt and you just in case yeah. so we have you for it. We, we want to keep that year. Yeah. So I end up, we do an inner squad scrimmage before the year, bro. We beat the first team defense. Mm-hmm. They might not admit this. We had refs there, everything. You remember the, was that 2010 Rose bowl with Vince Young and, Oh, USC, yeah. Sure. Reggie Bush. USC, when this young tore their asses apart. Identical, bro. Can't lie to you, bro. Identical. Uh, I, that was I, one of I, the I greatest games. Real quick, that was one of the greatest games I've ever seen. Ever. Yeah. Ever. And I, I promise you, the same way that that ended at the pylon with Vince Young, it ended like that with the starting defense wow. at SBU. And they were hurt, bro. When I tell you they were hurt, the co- head coach ripping their ass like we're, you know, we got to do tackling. Just, you can't tackle this freshman fucking quarterback. You know, yeah, excuse yeah, my okay. language. Oh, but they going in. They going in. And I'm like, but I do. Right. You know, I'm laughing because I'm yeah, like, yeah. I knew I at that point, my confidence was like crazy. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's what I do, bro. Like you yeah. should expect it to. This is new. Like, this ain't new to me. This is yeah. this 
This is what I've been doing only since I've been bro. playing quarterback for two years. But this listen, is what I've been bro. doing. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. And I, I, I'm laughing because I literally, it was, it was crazy because I was like, after that, it was so much more respect. The respect was different in the locker room. And like, if you know oh, football, you know sports, like, that's different. Like, they like, what's up, Steve? You know, before it was like, what's up, freshman? Yeah, yeah. Now, now it's like, now, now, now what's your name? Me Steve. Now yeah, now what's your name? I'm not freshman yeah. no more. I got a yeah, name. Exactly. Yeah, I yeah. got a name. I'm yeah. here now. Yeah. You know what this is. So mm-hmm. that was cool. And I end up, I end up playing a, you know, I traveled a whole year, which is crazy. Um, cause they don't, I mean, if you know college, like a lot of times they're not going to travel a freshman that they don't expect to play, especially but if you're a red shirt. Right. Exactly. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to travel. So like the fact that I was traveling, I'm going to Oklahoma. We went to Alabama. We went to Arkansas, all these different stadiums, you know, and I'm seeing these stadiums and that like lit a oh, fire. In you're me. talking about the actual universities. Yeah. 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 Y'all played like, there? Pra- no, we oh, didn't play there. Got it. Got it. Got we, it. Pra- we, we got to go to their facilities and like practice and like, yeah, yeah. Um, I wish we had played them. We, I, yeah. I'll never forget. You know Delaney Walker? He went to Central yeah. Missouri, right? I, I know exactly bro, who Delaney Walker is. Bro, we went to we went to Central Missouri, bro, on their homecoming. And I thought I was about to play. Because when I tell you that they were smoking starting quarterback at the time. Yeah. I, I was like, he got hit one time before halftime. They told me to warm up. I'm telling you, my eyes was probably like this big, bro. I'm like, I'm about to play right now. Is it in front of like nervous? 20? Bro, I was scared. I ain't never been scared to play football in my entire life. At that moment, I, I would admit I was scared. I'm well, like, I mean, bro, I'm not. You I'm not ready. Yeah, you got to think about it though, right? So this is your. This would be would have been your first game with no prep, no prep, no first ring, zero no first team reps, none of that. So yeah, I, I get it. I get it. I get it for sure. Bro, and I'm talking about when I was seeing the way this man was getting hit. <laughs> mm-hmm. There was one hit right before halftime. Like he got his feet was above his head. And he hit his head on the ground, wow. and he didn't get up. And, like, the medical staff went out there. And, granted, it was fourth down, so that saved me because I might have had to go in for, like, two reps because yeah. they had to take him out. Okay. Bro, I'm talking about – they tell you, warm up, Steve, because you're probably going to take the next series. And it was, like, a minute left before half. So, mm. I'm warming up, bro. I'm talking about the first ball I threw went way over my boy head. Like, I, I'll i never forget his name. He was, was Tyrese Harris. Yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. He was, lo- he was looking at me like, bro, you scared, bro? I'm like – Man, I ain't scared, bro. Boy, I was pissing down my leg. I'm like, Lord Jesus, if you there. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, dude. If so, you there. So I'm assuming you never got into that game. I didn't play. I didn't okay. Play. Yeah, it went to oh. halftime, and he he cleared uh, concussion protocol. That's so, protocol. like, he didn't. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So I was like, Phew. shout out to That's him. the bullet. Shout out, shout out. Yeah, thank, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> you saved my life. I might not went home. Yeah, that's so funny. So, yeah. you're, you're so do you didn't play at all your freshman year then? Did not. I didn't play at SBU, no. Okay. So like, at all or yeah. just your freshman year? Well, like I didn't play technically my freshman year at SBU because I was still a freshman. Right. So, when but I you transferred. But you, Oh really? So when you train, yeah. okay, let's get into that. That's what I'm. That's okay. what I was trying to say. Yeah. So you never, you never took a snap at SBU. No. Okay. Not a live snap. No. So, your sophomore year, you transferred. Yes, sir. Where did you transfer to? So I transferred that semester. I transferred to Whitewater University, of Whitewater. At the semester. Oh, you pause for a second, bro. That's semester okay okay semester, semester yeah so like after holiday like I, I just didn't go back I came home for Thanksgiving I came home for Christmas and I just didn't go back I ended up so I tried to first of all I tried to transfer um to a different D2 school um St. Cloud and they ended up denying Minnesota. my my yeah they tried to deny my like appeal but it was a lot closer bro it's driving distance to, you know it's four five, like six hours Something like that. It's a lot shorter than like the. What, what made you transfer? So um, I ended up coming back home. My, my dad got diagnosed with prostate cancer. Mm. So I ended up, I heard that and I'm like, I gotta, my dad's not gonna be able to work I'm trying to come home, you know, help out with my mom um, and help him if he needs anything. So he ended up having to get like a surgery and. Got it, got it, know, got but it. God got, got him. Blessed. So he's still, yeah, he's, God he's good. For yeah, sure. he's good. So. Okay. Yeah, man. So you tra- so you ended up transferring that semester. Of course, you got to sit out that f- that semester. You can't play, right? Yeah. Were yeah. you able to play that following year? Yes. So 
This is then, is this your junior year or is this still your fresh, your sophomore year? This would be my sophomore year. This is your sophomore, sophomore year, year eligibility wise, right? Yes, yes, correct. As far as your credits and everything, were you a junior or were you still a, a sophomore? Sophomore. You're so this is my second, second year of college. Second so year of like, college, period. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, because you 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 transferred at your the semester. Yep. Semester, got it. Okay. So I sat that semester and then was able to play the next semester. The next semester, got you. Um, so you said you were coming in after the semester to Whitewater, right? Correct. Sorry about that. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we back. But anyway, go ahead, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I ended up transferring at semester because otherwise I'd have had to sit a semester. Got it. So that way I came in on the off season. So I didn't do spring ball that semester, but I ended up coming in the next fall and being eligible to play. So I ended up, um, man, a bunch of stuff happened that spring though. So I ended up transferring to Whitewater, you know, and I'm coming in, they highly touted, like, oh, this QB, local QBs transferring, blah, blah, blah. Like real highly spoken of. Whitewater ended up scheduling my classes for me. Um, and there was a practice conflict. I should say class conflict because I couldn't go to practice. So I ended up um, getting called into a meeting and the, you know, the head coach at the time, Lance Lightbold is like, hey, we would like you to move positions. You know, you're missing a lot of practice time um, because of your, you know, your class conflicts or, you know, whatever the issue is. So it doesn't look good to the team, you know, that you're, you know, missing these practices and trying to play a position that needs to be seen, needs to be present. So that's my, and that was my question. I was going to ask you, why did you end up changing positions? But the reason why you yeah. end up ultimately changing positions was due to the fact of a scheduling conflict. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Wow. Isn't that crazy? How, how did crazy. you think about that? You know, at the time I had, I had a lot going on, bro, uh, upstairs, um, just mentally, like, you know, dealing with my pops. And then um, at the time, I'm like, man, I just want to play ball. Got it. I ain't played okay. in a year. Got I'm you. like, man, whatever I got to do to get on the field, let me get on the field. Like, and they were like, well, your fastest route is playing receiver. And I'm mm. like, say less. Mm. You know, so and that was really, you know, that's history. What's what's the what's the the time frame? What year is this your sophomore year? Um, this is like the summer going into my sophomore season. What's what's they the asked me to move. What's, was it twenty what? 2011, 2010. It'll be 2011. Okay. Summer of, it will be summer of 2010. Summer of 2010 heading into 2011. Okay. How did you yeah. play yeah. when you got to Correct. Whitewater initially? Man, I was trash. I ain't going to lie. I, okay. As a receiver, I depended on, on my speed and solely my speed. Um, you want to go route runner? Curve, I mean, it's kind of – man, listen, I you think being as quick and as athletic as I, I feel sometimes, it – it didn't translate. Like, you know, you got to time routes. You got to, like, this certain distances. I wasn't, depths, I wasn't yeah. controlling my speed. I was trying to do everything. Yeah, trying to do everything as fast as I could. And that, like, that's not how you run routes. No. Routing is, like, finesse. Sure. Yeah, talk about it. No, this is this is good for the younger people you know, like, who, are, who are listening to the show and yeah. our wide receivers. It's not necessarily your physical strength. It's about being smart. It's about – the depths Bro. of the route. It's about foot. Man. It's about footwork. It's about everything. Talk about it. Well, the thing is, uh, the one thing I will say, like I will truly say, I didn't know how to run a good route until after I graduated from Whitewater, and that's crazy to talk about because a lot of people wouldn't know that they like I became a route runner at Whitewater, but I don't think I truly honed it and developed that skill until I left Whitewater. I was super robotic and systematic. I was kind of put in a box at Whitewater as a as a route runner. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, man, you like as you start to learn how to run routes, you have to like use your speed deceptively. You know what you're doing. The DB doesn't know what he's what you're running. Exactly. So you you have to disguise your route and make it look like it's something else. You know, and I'm I will say my senior year is probably better at running routes, you know, than the majority of a lot of people, but I didn't truly know how to run like professional routes until I went and worked with Rashad Whitfield, who's a, who's a footwork king on Instagram. You can look him up. He's got thousands of followers. Works with Odell, uh, Jet McKinnon. You know, his resume is crazy. But mm -hmm. um, I went down to Texas and I was doing two days with him for like six days. And when I tell you. 
And this, yeah, wait a minute, real quick, Steve. What's the time frame? Was this was this going into your senior year, or what? What? When was it? That that's after. It was after I graduated, bro. Okay. Um, you said Rashad Woodfield, right? Yes, sir. Um. So let's just scale back just for a split, a split second, okay? Got you. Got you. Um, because the reason why I want to scale back for a split second is because we skipped your junior. Sophomore, and, junior. So we skipped, your, year. we skipped, no, we skipped your junior year because we talked about your sophomore year. You said you were trash. Yeah, I was, when I tell you that, I was like, it's a lot rough around the edges. Sure. That was probably my hardest year playing football. I had thoughts of quitting. Like, I was like, maybe I should just go to school. Wow, it was that bad, huh? It was, it was rough. And I mean, I think that had a lot to do with, like, my dad at the time, you Got know, it. just my kind of my life situation, but it was like everything was weighing on me at the time. And I'm like, maybe it's a lot of that, bro. You know, and I to, to kind of step back, like it's a lot of that. There's times, I think there's gonna be times in any athlete's career that they're gonna have that moment of like doubt of themselves. Oh, no, and I sure. will say like, sometimes you just have to like, when you overcome that, great things happen. True, true. You know what I'm saying? Like great things happen. Like. But that pr that pressure created a diamond. It made me want to get better. It made me want to really like hone in on my craft and like do what I had to do to get on the field and get some reps. Okay. So then your junior year comes along. What did you do since you knew now? Okay, I'm in a new position. This is not what I got all state honors for. This is not what I got player of the year honors for. I'm in a brand new position. What am I gonna do? this summer to get better what what was your what was your mindset going into the summer of your junior year to get better and i think i caught a hundred balls every day if not more were you still like, at white water or were you coming or were you back here i came home i came home to racine but like i was <laughs> like i gotta get on the jug machine like i had my little brother use the jug machine i, I didn't lead a gym i was in the gym every day but now this is, again back, back at horlick again Yes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So like, I'm talking about like jugs machine every single day. I'm, I'm running routes, um, doing everything I can. You know, whenever I have a quarterback possible, I'm running routes. I ran routes on air. I, probably if not every, every day, it was every other day. Like I was doing field work, but I was like on it. Like I got to get better. I'm trash. Let me ask you something. Do you, did you find yourself or do you still find yourself? Cause I do this. Myself. Yeah. I'm at, the reason why I'm asking you is because of this. Like when I'm in a house, if I'm going around a corner, I'll be doing it all the time. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. yeah. So do you do the same thing still running? Like what every, you, day. Yeah. every day. <laughs> every it's day. It's an athlete thing, bro. It's Listen, an athlete as a, thing. As a teacher, bro, I'm, my kids be trying to trail me at school. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. oh, got him. Okay. Got him. That's <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. So, you're putting in all this work the summer of your junior year. Did you see yeah. did you see the payoff your junior year? Oh yeah. I led the team in every receiver stat my junior year. Is this with Jake Kumara on the team too? Um, you know what? I think he was on the team. I think he was the he just I, transferred from it. I know he was there your senior year. Yeah, I think he just transferred. So I think he was there the whole I remember there was plays my junior year. He's like, hey, bro, uh, what do I got? We lining up. Jay Kumaro, for people who don't know, he's played for the Packers. He's played for – did he play for Buffalo too? Patriots. He's on the Buff – he's on Buffalo right now. So he's he on Buffalo now. Patriots, the, uh, Bengals, Packers, Patriots. I said Patriots. Yeah, and then and Buffalo. Buffalo. So four, Buffalo right now. Four teams, yeah. Four yeah. teams right now. Um, and you said – so this is your senior year. Did y'all win – how many state champions did you win? Or not national national championships. Sorry about that. My bad. My bad. Three. So you won your junior, your sophomore, junior, and senior year. So I ended up getting a ring for the year that I did not play. Your fresh. I mean the transfer year. Yes. So I ended up um, didn't play. So I won't take credit for that. But I ended up getting a ring for that. And then uh, my junior year, we did not go to the national championship. Your sophomore year, y'all won it. Yeah, senior year y'all won it. Speaking of which, yeah, yeah. Speaking of yeah, which, yeah. Bro, let me let's pull up this 2013 Stag Bowl real quick. And the oh, Stag God. Bowl, Steve, the Stag Bowl is 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 the D three national championship game, right? 
Is that what the stack yeah. is? Yes, sir. And this is against Mount Union. Where's Mount Union located? Do you know where they are? Ohio. Okay. This is against Mount Union. It's dope because it's on ESPNU. Yeah. University of Wisconsin Whitewater. This is crazy. This, was this a year that I, I think Nick Driscoll was trying to cover me? He was chasing me this year. Yeah. This is one of your that players. Boy in the that slot. That boy yeah. in the slot, boy. You see, you see him right here. Okay. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Okay. Feed me. Yeah. Feed me, Barrett. Feed me, Barrett. Let's get loose. Yeah. Look at you, man. Hey, listen, when I tell you that that's one of the best times, some of the best memories I have, bro. You should have worked. You know what you should have did? You should have wore your, your championship ring. I should have, man. I Like I said in the beginning, man, you know I'm humble. I, them things probably tucked away somewhere. I wear them on special occasions, though, you I know, got like you. weddings. That's, that's you number <laughs> seven right there. You know, weddings, that's funny. That's you number seven right there, right? Yes, sir. Now, you now, now listen, you were just in the slot. Now you are wide. Yeah. What 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 memories brings you back? Like when you when you're watching this, man, it's it's crazy. I just I know this game, bro. Was I think I had the first I want to say first four catches of this game, which I'm gonna have a little bit of sour taste in my mouth. But they stopped going to me. That would have been the biggest game of my career. I had like 50 yards receiving in the like first four minutes of that game. Okay, and they stopped going to me. But I will say we blew them out. Like, yeah, mm. yeah, it was a big win. Yeah, it was a huge win. So, this being your senior year, did you? I know that you said you had a really good game your soft. I mean, a really good season your junior year. Yeah, when Jake Kumaraw transferred in, all of that good stuff. But your senior year, how did you play? Man, listen, that's, I know a lot of people make excuses, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of, like, backstory to that. I, I like, uh, in college, there's a lot of revolving with the coaches. Um, and there was a, the coach that had come in at the time. I'm not even going to disclose who he is. But yeah, we, we, don't do that. we don't do that here. We don't throw people under the bus. The, the coach that came in, man, like, I, I threw myself under the bus. I'll take accountability for what I did. But he asked me during a meeting in preseason, like, to tell a joke in front of the whole team. And I told a joke that wasn't funny to him. And I think that kind of put a bitter taste in his mouth about who I was. You think a bad uh, joke did that? Really? Fam, fam, oh. listen. Okay. Fam, when I, when I tell you that, like, you can ask my dogs, like, no, I'm I'm, no. I'm, just, I'm just trying to see how petty this coach is, if that was his case. Well, it, it's, you know, it, it it's, wasn't an appropriate joke. It's other joke. issues. It, oh, okay. Got it. Got it. It, it wasn't an appropriate yeah. joke. Let's, then, let's get to the crux of it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that's why I said I take accountability. I know that I told a joke that, like, it was bad at him. Like, it made him look bad. So, I feel like he took some offense to it. And it kind of, like, it didn't. Like, I, we, I was cool with him. He was cool. But I feel like now he's like, I don't, you know, I don't care if he gets the ball or not. Or, like, gotcha. it was, you know, and then he, he put me in position. Like, he had me play running back a couple of times. And, like, I never got a carry. I'm like, you had me rep running back all week, but you never gave me a carry. Mm, okay. You know, and I had I had probably, like, six carries my senior year as a running back. And I averaged, like, 12 yards. So it's safe to say it's safe to say your junior year was better than your senior year for you. Agree, yeah, hundred percent. Step wise and probably football wise, like and just like how you felt as a football player. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, and again, I will say maybe it wasn't that. Maybe I'm making an excuse um, because Jake Kumaro came into his own. Mm. You know, you when you got a guy that that's dominant. You know, he's that dominant in the red zone. Um, what was he about? Go to he's like six five, right? Six. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. six five. Runs a runs a four four forty. Yeah. Um, he's a big dude, so it's like, why would you not throw him the ball? He's speaking of super, which, what were your measurables? Right now, I'm about five eleven. No, um, my senior, no, we got, no, senior, yeah. We, senior, let's go back there. Senior, yeah, senior. yeah. Let's go back to I, your physicals, and I'm okay. talking about even your forty, your your vertical. Okay, arm. right yeah. on. Okay. Um, so I would say my pro day. Um, I measured at 5'11 and 7'8. I was 197 pounds. Um, I ran up my fastest 40 is a 4'4'3. Um, 
vertical is 36, 36 point something. I don't know. Broad jump was like 10, 10, 12 or. So you got invited to pro day? Huh? Yeah, I went to, so I went to a regional pro day. I made it to a regional. I did a local one. So Whitewater has one because like we had some athletes at the time. Of course. Um, So we had our own like local pro day that I got invited to. Didn't get invited to the Wisconsin Pro Day. I was kind of salty about that, but I think they also didn't like me because I ain't from place. Um, mm-hmm. You speak last, at the University of Wisconsin's Pro Day. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I was salty. I was salty that I, I held some resentment for that one because I'm like, you guys know I can play. Like, and there's eyes there. You always try to get seen as much as you can. They didn't let me come, but okay. I digress. I ended up going to a regional combine um, that they held at um, the Chicago Bears indoor facility. And that's like where I had my probably my best day. Like I my five ten five drill was like if it was at the combine, it was top three. Break that down because a lot of people don't know what the five ten five drill is. So a five ten five drill is basically like um, you start in the middle and you're gonna side almost side run five ways this, five yards this way. Then you're gonna go ten yards this way and then back through the middle. Yeah, and I ended up like my number was like three nine three, which is like stupid. If you okay. look at the numbers, like it might be top like ten of all time, mm-hmm. and like so I know I was moving and like things like that. And I'm trying to think about my my shuttle, my L drill was like six six nine six. I'm and I'm assuming you got pro day as a wide receiver. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yep, and I still got all the film for that. I should have sent that to you. Yeah, you should have. Um, I, I but I got sure. I got, I got like, um, you can see the routes that you run. Like they give you the route tree. You got your 40 all recorded. Um, but I ended up having a hell of a pro day. Didn't get any kind of like NFL attention. And I started to find out through my agent, like, you know, they're, they're thinking about your size. They think they're in, you're undersized. So, you know, they don't want to. Because this was before the days of, of Tyreek Hills. This was before the days of, um, yes. Tavon Austins and people with the yes. slot receivers like that, like we have right now, Hunter Renfro's and and all, all of, the, of them, bro. These smaller receivers, I yeah. Mean, this Adam, is Thielen, that. Adam Thielen, look at him, like you know, he's a guy that has sure hands. But I'm like, that's he. He, if I had to compare myself to somebody, that's who I am. Okay, he's, I got. You. He's got sure hands. He's gonna make the play on third down. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's like what Whitewater used me for. Like I was like catching balls on third down. Yeah, I knew I was gonna get for me personally, Steve, the way I was thinking about it too is just more so just stature wise, size wise. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's that's the reason why I, I, I was mentioning the Tavon Austins, the yeah, um, the um, who did I just say before? My my man, that Cheetah, Cheetah, I mean, Cheetah. You got like Stephon Diggs. Yeah, but you, Cheetah. Um, I can't think he's of his fast though. No, he's super fast. Yeah, he's super. No, fast. not Renfro. Right. I'm talking about. Um, I just had it. I just said his name two seconds ago. I'm talking about Cheetah for the for the Chiefs. Tyreek Hill, yeah, Tyreek. Tyreek Hill, yeah, Tyreek Hill. Yeah, yeah. Stature wise, wise bro. y'all both about the same five five ten five eleven one ninety. I mean, but you look at like, you know, you got guys like Darren Sproles that were there. True. You know, I held that, bro. I held on to that for a little bit because I'm like, bro, my stature has nothing, to, and they don't measure heart. I know that sounds so stereotypical. I know that sounds so I like cliche. I get what you're saying, though. But like, I'm gonna outwork everybody there. Excuse me. I get what you're you know saying. What I'm saying. So, so, no interest from NFL teams. I know you ended up ultimately playing for the Racing Raiders. Mm-hmm. Did you play any pro ball prior to the Racing Raiders? I played um, for Wichita Falls, the Nighthawks. It was in the IFL, Indoor Football League. Okay, so you did play. I ended, How was that? For yeah, you? Signed, signed a con- I, I hated it, bro. I'm not going to lie. It's not for everybody. It's it's much faster. It's, it's inside. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was like, if you're not on a team, like I think the AFL, so it goes AFL, IFL, and then like the all the bottom feeders. Yeah, no, 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 I get you. I get you. Um, and that's not a knock at them. You know? No, no, no. Um, I get you. I get you. But I go down to this this IFL and um, it's cool, bro. I love all the people there, but it's like you're. I was put in a hotel, you know. And, and granted, this is like, you know, I'm put in a hotel, and so you're not living like. Your life, like you have feel like you should. yeah, I got you, I got you. Yeah, so like I'm like I'm in this position, and I like 
I don't feel like it was like I was free to do what I wanted to. Like I'm, yes, I'm a football player, but now I feel like it got me in a box. Mm, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So like it, it would be different if I had my own apartment. It'd be different if I had my own vehicle. Like so, there was a lot of things that I didn't like. But even the game, like playing on the turf, like that turf hurt, bro. Like when you get hit and you you either hit the wall or you hit the floor too hard, like yeah. it's ice. A lot of the arenas that you play in, there's ice underneath or basketball court or concrete. Concrete, yeah. So yeah. it's it's yeah. not like it, you know, it's like the, the, the turf and stuff is, sit, is sitting on top of like a hockey rink, a baseball, yeah. a baseball diamond. I got you. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So it was like you get hit and like you're playing football on concrete. You're getting tackled on concrete essentially. How was you know? the play so for like, that? You know, and you don't have to get into I'm, figures. I'm I mean, it, it's cool. It's cool if you're like single, you know, like and you're not trying to like start a family. But yeah. at that time, like, you know, I'm I'm kinda looking ahead. I'm trying to invest. I wanna say, you know, you. there's no four oh one K, there's no pension. Oh, so, like, gotcha, if you're not gotcha, gotcha. if you're not if you're not thinking about that thing, like, you know, the NFL is gonna take care of you. Of course. You know what I'm saying? You, you make it to that level, you're taking different care of you. Different beats. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. so then ultimately you end up playing for the Raiders, right? Yes, sir. Played, I think, three seasons with them. What well, at the same uh, wide receiver position? Yeah, yep. So mm-hmm. you play wide receiver for the Raiders. Then you had this catastrophic injury. Yeah. Um, is that what? So three years going into the Raiders, you you end up with this injury, broken vertebrae, right? Yeah, two. Two vulgar, broken vertebrae. Um, yeah, T four, T five. T four, T five. Okay. And that was like, the, was that the end of your football career? For me mentally, yeah. Like I, with that injury, I endured so much, bro. Like, like I talked about top three injuries. That's probably, that's, that's number one for sure. And um, you didn't know, right? No, I didn't know at the time. Just okay. was in a lot of pain. No, go ahead. Keep talking. I got you. I'm just, I'm uh, just trying to. Yeah, trying to I got you. I I uh I didn't know at the time I ended up um going to a chiropractor and trying to get adjusted and he's he's like you got some ribs that are out of place. So I end up getting these adjustments and then like the next day I you wake know, up do, and like do, I got some do you like remember tingling play, numbness in my feet. Do you remember the play that did it? Oh, he froze again. So I was asking him if you remember the play that 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 ended up messing up his vertebrae. Um, and right here it says, I usually don't flex on a gram, but today marked exactly 12 months since I was released unknowingly breaking two vertebrae. I was asking real quick before you broke up, do you remember the play that actually did it? I I think that I know. Um, we were playing Rock and Rush um, down in Illinois. I went up for... Uh, like a vertical, a deep ball, and I end up I caught it, but the DB like was facing me, and he pushed my like chest plate, and I ended up like falling on my head and my shoulders, like high on my shoulders, like where my name would be on my jersey, mm-hmm. and I remember losing the the air in my like so my knees basically came down on top of me, but I remember losing oh. the air in my chest, and I'm like in pain, but I'm like at the time I caught the ball, and I'm thinking like man, you know I'm more excited about play this big play before half set us up for a touchdown to go ahead and I end up coming out and I took a couple of breathers and I I'm sitting on the sideline kind of had some like tingling in my like my shoulders and I'm as a football player you're like man I just you know made a play and, and it's part of the game like I got you know I got banged around a little bit I'm straight um play the rest of the game and I ended up coming home and I like the car ride at home I couldn't get comfortable mm. couldn't catch my breath and I'm like I don't know like you know, I fell on my shoulders. Maybe I got something, you know, bruised rib or something. I don't know. Um, couldn't get comfortable, and and I slept it off. Uh, took some ibuprofen, you know, thinking, you know, you play a football game, you just you you're gonna feel some aches and pains. Yeah, you're gonna have some type of aches and pains, right? For sure. Uh, never really subsided. You know, I'm playing. I was pretty active at the time. I'm teaching, um, practicing with the Raiders still, um, playing dodgeball, playing flag football. And like the pain was not going away. Like I was, you know, I'm starting kind of working out, getting my, you know, doing those things that I started to do after football. Um, like I said, I tried to go, go to the chiropractor, get some adjustments. Didn't help. I woke up the next day, like after an adjustment, my knees 
kind of like were tingling to my feet. And I'm like, something's, you know, call my chiropractor. He's like, you need to go to the doctor right now. I just set up an MRI for you. So I go get imaging and they're like, yeah, your T5, T4 is broken. You need to stop moving like right now. Wow. And like, because it, because days, it could have caused, it could have caused paralysis? Yeah. Like, okay. uh, I could have been a quadri quadriplegic, he said, because of the break. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. The break is, so, the, so for, for like people that don't know, the T4, T5 are literally one's above your shoulder blade and the other one is in the middle of your shoulder blades. So if you think about like that middle part where your shoulder blades come together, that's where those vertebrae are. And he's okay. saying that nerve endings go into your arms, right? I was squatting, bro. I was, I was at the time, you know, I'm squatting 415. Um, and I would, when I picked the weight up, it would buckle me like almost like my body would kind of like pick up. And I would do my set and then I'd put it on my shoulders. But like, I, I had no clue at the time. They kept telling me, like I said, my chiropractors kept telling me it was a rib that was subluxated, which means it's out of place. And they were trying to do those adjustments. And then I go get that MRI and they're like, bro, your back is broken. You need to like, we need to put you in a brace. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah. So let's talk about this picture real quick, because I'm assuming this first, this first picture here is when you when you <laughs> was around where, where you couldn't do anything at all right that that picture is from the day i got released so this is when you're when you're back onto your road of recovery from the doctors yeah they said that i can start hitting the gym look at my face bro so if no you look i get at my it face, i get it that, so, that's the, go ahead no go, I, I was just gonna say that this is what go ahead what were you gonna say i was i was gonna say that face bro literally tells you everything like i was so unhappy bro like depressed anxious didn't know what was wrong with me like the, the doctor said my back was broken um but you know how many tests i went through like to figure out like that nothing else was wrong mm -hmm. so like i had so much stress from like thinking it was my kidneys thinking it was like uh you know some kind of bone deficiency bone cancer um you know, and you and said this is the like, first day that you got released to, to start working out again? Yeah, yeah. and the doctors were like, hey, you're clear to do your thing. Your vertebrae look like they're healing. They, they look, you know, that the crease is now forming and coming together. So you think I would be happy, right? Mm -hmm. Not at all, bro. I see. <laughs> what, did you have surgery? I had two. I had a kyphoplasty and then I had a bone biopsy. Briefly touch on what are, what those are, just briefly. So um, a bone biopsy checks for like any kind of malignant um, tumor or anything that might be in your bones. Um, and they take a fragment, like they take a drill um, and they go into your bone through your back and they pull out a fragment of the bone marrow to see if there's any kind of cancer in there. Kyphoplasty is like a, um, they put like a rubber cement or like a, it's like a biomaterial that helps to seal the bone that, that's fractured so it doesn't slip or like because they say like a fractured disc if you look at a fractured disc if it slides along your spinal cord they can sever it so they didn't want it to slip if I turned or did anything after the fact so it, it seals the bone to make sure it doesn't do that. No I got you. What, 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 yeah. do, you, what do you think about looking at this picture? What is, how does this picture make you feel? Man, it's, it just reminds me anything is possible, bro. Like you can, if you want to overcome it and you want to get back on the right path, like you just have to have a certain willpower and you have to like pick yourself up sometimes. I got you. Know, you. You're going to gonna go through some stuff, but God is good, man. No, for sure. All the time. All the time. So one last thing. Now we know, you know, I just wanted to get into your fitness, into your fitness um, journey that you're on, that you've been on for this very long time, and you know, is you know, is it's is it's an it's an honor to have somebody that's a superstar, um, that is also someone who is sponsored by service. Oh my Star. god! Oh my god! Yeah. So yeah, so we're gonna talk about it. Let's get into this, man. Let's what's what uh, what, is, sure. what is arms race nutrition? Let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, you. So, first I mean, of all, how did you get a sponsor? 
I wouldn't really call it a sponsor, bro. Um, what is it then? I, I mean, it's just a supportive brand that helps me achieve the goals that I want to achieve. Oh, oh, oh. So let me ask you this. Do they give you things? I mean, sometimes they okay. give me like this. Uh, and... All right. Um, essentially, man, you I hooked up with the guy you're looking at right now. His name is Julian Smith. Um, and he's kind of the face of this brand. And we linked up on Instagram actually because of his training methods. I, I really, um, I really like respect and know that the work that he puts in is genuine. Um, he's the type of dude I've been following for a little while. So I know like the fact that he pushes this brand and he supports this brand, mm -hmm. like it's everything that I, I feel like I am as well. Um, it's authentic. It doesn't like, it's not a bunch of fillers. You know, this is a guy who takes exactly what he's telling you to take, you know, and shows it on his Instagram daily. So I got behind it, you know, I started taking it. And I think honestly, the results that I've seen and the results that I have right now kind of speak for themselves uh, as okay. far as his brand. So like, so again, I, you know, I don't really brag about it too much. I no, I'll like, brag for you. How can so, how can yeah. someone who is willing to try these supplements and everything like that? How can they get a discount using these supplements? Man, just hop on, um, go to this website, look what you want to take, um, and when you check out, throw in that code Steve Ten. Steve who? Yourself, Steve Ten, baby. Uh huh. But you're not a sponsor. But okay, yeah, I like that, no. man. Then, yeah, <laughs> Steve Ten, I like that. You see how I caught him up real quick? You see, you see how that went? From him not being sponsored by Arms Race Nutrition to now all of a sudden he got a, a, a code where you can use during checkout. See what I'm saying? I love it. I love it. Hey, Steve, man, listen, bro. Honestly, man, from the bottom of my heart, man, I want to I want to thank you, bro, for coming on and telling your story. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate it, man. I just wanted to give people a chance and I want to give continue to give people a chance to come on to talk about their athletic journeys and their athletic careers. Um, and yeah. Bro, I learned a lot. And like I told you before, yeah. as much as we always talk or whatever, I did learn a lot. So um, I just want to appreciate. I mean, I just want to tell you, thank you. Um, I appreciate you. And um, you already know. Yeah, man. It, it was fun, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, always, man. Anytime you want to have a drink, let me know. All right, bro. I'm with it. Uh, right. Let's all wait. Let's do the, another toast. We're going to do another. I only got water, bro. I That's okay. Drink, bro. That's okay. To life, health, wealth. Last but not least, hey. sports talk. Salute, bro. Oh, baby. I appreciate Salute. you, man. You're the man, bro. You know I that. am. Alan, Cole Beasy, Coburn, the host of Baseline the Goal Line. We got a lot of whole a uh, lot of more interviews coming up. I got a plethora of people that's gonna be coming. Crazy. All, all the interviews are gonna be um releasing every Monday and possibly every Thursday as well. Um so once again, Steve, I appreciate you, man. Um, yes, that Peloton kicking my ass too, by the way. I, <laughs> I did what you did yesterday, though. I hopped on one. I seen you did one. I'm like, I'm about to try his out. Low impact. <laughs> yeah, that, no, so I do the low impact for the warm ups. What? And then I, yeah, the, my low impact. Boy, I was in there. I was in there. <laughs> I bet, bro. Listen, my low impacts, those are my warm ups. And then I jump into the regular one for like another 30 or 40 minute one after that. Hey, you different. I'm going to just say that. You did. Anyway, Alan Cole, BZ Coburn, the host wow. of Baseline, the Goal Line, the illest wow. sports podcast the illest. in the world. Appreciate you, man. Always, bro. Love All right. You, man. Good love, bro. For sure. Yep.